Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. For those of you that are new, my name is Anna and this is At Home with Anna. So welcome to my garden. I decided that today would be a great day because it's cloudy and overcast and cool. Just before 8 a.m. I decided to go ahead and give you guys a early October garden tour to show you what the garden's looking like because next week we are going to be in the 50s as a high and high 30s, low 40s as a low. So I think that things are going to start to dwindle down. So I wanted to make sure to capture everything on camera, mainly for my own reference so that I remember <laughs> what everything looks like or is doing this time of year next year. Um, but Ernie had the grass, uh, you can see it's really green. He had it fertilized, aerated, and overseeded a, a couple weeks ago, and it's looking so good, so I'm so happy with that. You can see my trees in the back are starting to change, and I see my breath a little bit out here. It's a little cool. Before we get started on the garden tour, I have an idea and I need to know what you guys think about this. On this channel, I do all things homemaking, hence the name At Home with Anna. I do gardening, decorating, cooking, cleaning, organizing. I do it all. My garden videos do really, really well. And that just tells me that there's a lot of people out there on YouTube that really enjoy gardening. So my idea is to start a second channel just for my gardening content. I have a lot that I'm going to be doing this coming spring. And um, that's including new gardens. And because my gardens are now existing in the backyard, as soon as the garden centers open up this spring, I'm going or next spring I'm going to be full force um, with the gardening so um, we still have arbors to put back here and all of those things but we have a lot of projects going on in the house and so it's kind of a balance outdoors indoor type thing so my question to you guys is do you think that I should start a second channel um, I think it's a great idea to keep the gardening content separate from the interior content. So um, I just I just feel like it would be better to have all of my gardening content in one you know one place. So that is my question to you. So leave me a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. But anyways, I want to show you guys where the garden is at today. And today is I think October 9th and. Um, I believe it's October 9th. I believe it's early October. Um, I can't remember the date today, but I think it's October 7th or 9th. <laughs> the time is just getting away from me. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look and see where we're at with the garden. We're going to start right here entering the backyard. My wax leaf privets are just doing amazing and getting so tall. They're as tall as the well, this one is anyways, as tall as the barbecue now. So they're filling in just beautifully. We've been keeping them clipped on this side and this side to give more energy um, to have it growing high as opposed to going, you know, growing out this way. And it's working great. So this is the entrance into the backyard. This is where we're going to be putting an arbor this coming spring. But look at the grass, you guys, compared to the last time I showed you guys the grass. It's looking so good. There's still a couple of spots that are um, new grass is still coming in. But overall, like right here, new grass is still popping in. It's looking really, really good. My trees are changing color. These are the... I'll, I'll put the name of everything on the screen down below, but these are my maples and I bought them so that I could have not only shade back here, but the fall interest and they are giving me that this year and I love it. I love seeing the leaves on the ground. It just makes me so happy. All of my our variety are doing fabulous. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I had some concerned early concerns early on, but those are now gone. We've been watering, haven't fertilized. We won't be doing that until spring. 
um, mainly because we wanted the, um, the fer what I read was if you fertilize these uh, before this coming spring or you know in spring if you fertilize them then it'll concentrate on putting out leafy growth as opposed to root growth and we really wanted these to root before winter so we just have been really diligent about watering them deep root watering them but they're doing really really good love them oh, love them so much so much prettier than a fence you guys know that i struggled with my hydrangeas and they are just performing as soon as august heat went away they decided that it was time to show their beautiful faces and i'm getting blooms on every stem i've been really diligent about clipping any anything that was you know bad on them and you know watering them in really good and so that's working and uh wait till you see the ones in the front i can't believe it the blooms are as big as my head but these are gorgeous my box woods are doing fabulous this one is not as big as this one look at this one this one has put on a ton of growth um but beautiful and here is my other um, hydrangea the only thing with the hydrangeas that i'm seeing and i'm going to uh, i'll show you in the front as well is this here i'm not sure what this is like is should i be spraying for something or is it just too late in the season for that i'm thinking the cold will take care of any pest <laughs> and we've got blooms coming in on these um the Mandanvilla, the uh, hibiscus will be coming out today. Um, there's another hibiscus and a Mandanvilla. Um, they're coming out. They are starting to show signs of, I don't like the cooler weather. <laughs> so it's time, it's time to take them out. Um, kind of a bummer, this one, this one and the other one need water, but I figured I'm taking them out. I'm not going to waste the water, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, um, it's their time. It's their time to go. I've got a bag ready, ready to get things taken out of these pots today. But here's the other one and they've put on at least, I don't know, maybe a foot of growth in the last month. And it was just because, not a, in the month, I'm sorry, in the last couple months, and it was really, I saw the growth happen when the August heat went away. They just shot up and just started blooming. So that's crazy, which means I wasn't, was not giving them enough water probably. And then here are my cornflowers again, not doing well because I don't water them enough. Um, I need to get my irrigation put in. My hellebore is doing good. The palm back there is doing really well. I transplanted these two from the pots up front they're doing well but I don't water enough my pugster pinker <laughs> so cute I need to deadhead um, doing really good and this one is come on there we go and um, getting some blooms on there I need to be more diligent about coming out here and watering I just uh, that's what I need to do. I need to come out here and do more watering. Sweet Bay Magnolia, showing signs of maybe some, I need to get some uh, iron put in there. Showing signs of lack of iron. <sighs> Remember the plugs, the coleus plugs that I put in the ground? This one is still pretty tiny. That one's gotten huge. <laughs> this is what happened, this is what my my uh, hydrangeas over in the other garden look like before I started deep root watering. None of this was getting enough water. I mean, you can see it's terrible. None of it. I was lazy and assumed the sprinkler was watering and the sprinkler was not. So I need to be more diligent about coming out and watering these, but the, all the brown spotting and all of that on these is just saying I'm thirsty and you're not watering me and yeah I'm really disappointed in myself with this little area it could look a lot better 
This is my Super Tunia Vista bubble gum that I pulled out of my bird bath in the front and just plopped it in the ground. It is finally ready to be pulled out. I let it have its show and it's finally ready, but it just performed beautifully. I cannot wait to get more of those next year. I'm going to do so much with these. This um, coleus is another plug that I did and it grew. Not huge, but uh, not as big as that one over there. <laughs> and look at this one over here and that one over there. They just, I just simply cut pieces off of the ones up front and put them in the ground and watered them and they just grew. It's amazing. All of the plants here are doing really well. This is the phlox. I've only got two left out of the, I think I planted three, three or four. So this one is doing well and that one is doing well. I love the color of that one. And then my dragon's breath. Oh my gosh. This is going to be a staple every year. I love it. Beautiful. Love this little trio. And everything else is doing really good. I transplanted in one of my videos my um, Veronica. And we've got one, two, three, four. There's five of them here. And they're they're doing okay. I mean, this one you can barely tell. It's got a little bit of leafing on it. There's a little bit of leafing in the little plugs in the ground. And then this one here is still hanging on for dear life. Um, and then my balloon flowers. Again, I wasn't giving enough water to any of this during the month of August. And it really shows. So, And then my beautiful great myrtle that you guys know I struggled with is doing really well <laughs> and getting these i love these berries i love these uh these are from the i think the blooms um and they just form these little berries on the end and i just i love them i don't know if the birds eat them or not but i love them so it just is a beautiful specimen. This is another area we're going to be putting in a arbor um, come spring. Here's my other hedge of the privets and they're doing really well. And then we have one right here. You can see how tall it's gotten. We keep it trimmed away from the air conditioner along with all of these. Um, we will make sure that there's always breathing room around our air conditioning but i'd love to see these get super tall you know um we still need to have some room to plant something here we'll see if we do another privet but anyways this is what the backyard is looking like right now in the beginning of october and i think that it just looks gorgeous let me give you some other views of it, but it just looks beautiful. I love my garden, especially since my grass is green. You can see it's been overseeded. You see the new, new grass popping up through the old grass and oh, of the garden. So Ernie and I are hoping to put the cement border around all of the gardens um, this coming spring and around the trees. And I decided that next year I'm not going to use this kind of mulch. I'm thinking maybe the straw mulch, the straw hay mulch. I'm not sure yet, but I, I, I wasn't really happy with the way my garden played off of this color of mulch. Um, so, but the garden could be much bigger and better if I would have paid more attention, but it was hot, y'all. <laughs> I was not, I was not willing to play gardener in the month of August, I'll tell you that. Um, but anyways, this is what the backyard looks like. Look at those maples, you guys. Oh my God, it looks so good. I love them. All right, let's go take a look at the front yard. So we are here up front next to my little bonfire pit area in the driveway. And this is my daylily garden. I transplanted, separated um, one daylily and got myself these four. So this was one plant 
and I turned it into four. I still have one gap there, which I can separate that one there, because I just think this is a perfect application for this little area. And we have another variety here that was planted by the builder, and it's doing well. All fluffy and pretty. My mums are doing so beautifully. I have decided next year, because these are performing so well for me, I'll show you three others. Next year, this is the only variety I'm getting, the only color, um, and I'm gonna show you why. My orange pansies and my topiaries that need a nice trim. I need to get that trimmed. I need to get them trimmed up before the next frost or before our first frost. Um, I gotta check and see when that is. Maybe I'll just leave them, I'm not sure. I don't know what these will do in winter. You guys will have to let me know. Do they go dormant? Do they die? I don't know. I have no idea, I have no experience with these in, um, in the winter. <laughs> um, here is the other mum. Look at these, you guys. They are freaking. my neighbor said, that is the first thing you notice in my yard, are these these mums they are just beautiful and she said my pumpkins look fake but they're not they're real so oh so pretty okay here is the other topiary with the orange pansies and lots of new growth on this guy too beautiful I am so impressed with these containers, these fall containers. They're doing just beautifully. Again, I'm gonna make sure to put the name of everything on the screen for you guys. But this one and this one, look at the Creeping Jenny here. Look at it. I mean, what? <laughs> I think it was only like to here when I planted it about four weeks ago. And it's just performing so well. Um, can we just talk about, I know so many of you guys were bothered <laughs> when I cut back my coleus, <clears throat> but look at, at, this one is huge, they're, they're all big again, and they're the perfect size, actually. Um, this is the size that they needed to be. Ernie coned our hollies, so all of them are coned now, but look at my coleus. They have all reflushed and are doing beautifully. But all of these are coned now, so they look like, I don't know, little Christmas trees. <laughs> so they look really good. And the coleus, I'm, uh, I'm in love with them. In love with them. They look so good. My hostas, of course, are doing beautifully. These guys have performed magnificently for me since the day I planted them. And everybody in this neighborhood told me they will not do well here. And look at <laughs> so ha. Um, this actually sits on this table here, but I watered yesterday. So I deadheaded. I have some blooms coming in in here, but look at the difference of the burgundy mums versus the yellow mums. I have not had to deadhead these. They bloomed and just stayed. They just stayed. And I don't see any spent blooms on them yet at all. I'm keeping them all watered. Everybody got fertilizer. Everybody did. But these guys, next year, these are going to be my go-to mums. Because I'm going to show you the other ones in just a second. But aren't they gorgeous? Oh, just beautiful. And they really pop off of the white pot pots. They're just beautiful. Okay. Here is the back of the bird bath garden. The Creeping Jenny performing as usual. And then we have some mums in there. We have another hosta. And I'm not sure what that plant is over there. But I liked it and bought it. And that's kind of how I roll. <laughs> Um, you guys saw me plant all of my fall interest here in the garden doing well. Now, can we just talk about my blooms on my hydrangeas? Oh my goodness. This one, magnificent. Bigger than my head. 
this one I have tried to tie it up <laughs> because it keeps flopping over and it said no I want to lay down so it laid back down again but they're getting that pink hue and I'm hoping they get a little deeper red and I'm going to cut these and bring them in the house I am like ecstatic about this here are all of the mums that I planted if you guys remember one of the grandkids stepped in this but look at how well it recovered it recovered really well and I've got all kinds of new blooms in there and what I'm thinking is once all of my blooms because it's tedious um, to come out and um, and take the uh, you know the spent blooms off because I have so many in my garden but what I'm loving about this variety and this is the only thing I love about them is once the blooms have or the leaves have fallen off of the blooms you're left with these little buds and you know I'm sure these will dry out um, and not look fabulous um, but they look still very fall like even when the petals have fallen off of the blooms so um, these were a little bit more tedious to take care of um, I've done it twice now I've come out and taken off spent blooms it takes me about an hour <laughs> to do it um, I need to do this one here and all I'm doing is coming out here and just popping them off like that and you know just just like that and it looks much better to not have the spent blooms on here and it allows for the ones beneath to come out and show their pretty faces but this is all I do it's just just that but I have not had to do that with the burgundy ones and so I'm thinking next year thinking next year this is gonna be all burgundy <laughs> Um, and we'll see so uh, my woodland sage this one is still performing beautifully this one just loves its life here ever since I planted it loves it but look at these hydrangeas I have some spent blooms yes but look at they're still performing look at that one in the back you guys how beautiful is that Ugh. I always struggle with do I leave them <laughs> or do I pick them you know because I really want these big beautiful blooms in my home so I don't know I'm thinking I might be cutting these these guys off and taking them in soon they're gorgeous my camellias have put on so much growth and they bloom consistently they're beautiful just beautiful look at this uh, I forgot what variety I'll put it on the screen of the sedum just gorgeous what a gorgeous border this is now that i know how this performs up here i can work with it differently next year so super excited about that and that kind of goes for everything in my garden this year the corn flowers or cone flowers can't remember <laughs> these up here are getting plenty of water so you can see a big difference in these um, versus the ones in the backyard uh, I really feel bad about those back there so I'm gonna get better we have another creeping Jenny here that's just starting to spill over and love another mum over there and that coleus I mean you can see the coleus just peeking through it's just looking beautiful so we have these mums here that are, have actually put on a good amount of growth so I didn't think they were going to grow um, you know that much and they have put on a good amount of growth I love them my cedar I cannot wait to cut some of this off for some Christmas projects super excited about that and then my day lilies I was gonna trim them but I'm gonna wait for them to I'm gonna wait for the first frost and let um, let it take the leaves and then I'll just I'll cut them back because um, I like the leafy bushiness here but um, and here's another our variety we have two of them um, in this garden and love love them Ooh, mosquito can't wait for those guys to go away but look at the blooms I'm getting on this one over here I think that one's ready to be cut 
just beautiful you guys they're gorgeous and then over here in my tree garden I want to show you these mums are turning pink look at this beautiful color that they are turning they're turning pink they're going from yellow to pink I had no idea that they did that and I thought oh my gosh how beautiful is that I have them paired with some yellow pansies and then the purple petunias which are still performing so well for me I'm not going to take them out they love their life here and who am I to tell them that they have to stop I have no idea what this is but it just started growing here <laughs> and I have no idea what it is and not a clue I don't know is that a hydrangea I have no idea what it is it just started growing here in front of the no pooping sign <laughs> I have no idea you guys but it looks like a little mini hydrangea and wouldn't that be awesome could be a weed I don't know if you guys can identify that let me know actually I should go get my phone and identify it um, if I find out what it is I'll put it on the screen right here but it just popped up so this garden looks so beautiful because I've got my yellow donut and then the pansies are not filling in the way I expected them to but that's okay and um, they still have some time I said the same thing about the petunias and that look what they did <laughs> they're just oh they're gorgeous love them just beautiful just beautiful this whole little garden is gorgeous let me give you a quick overview of the garden in the front so let's talk about what I plan on doing this spring I have already gotten permission from my um, HOA so what I'm gonna be doing is a garden here in the front of the driveway and on this side of the driveway and I'm not sure what I'm planting in there but I'm going to I would love to see the garden kind of meet over here and then do like an arbor with the vine entering the garden because eventually I want to have a my dream is eventually to have a garden all the way down here and all the way around the front of my property and um, I would love to see a hydrangea hedge here because I think it would be so beautiful during the summer to have the beautiful hydrangeas with Adirondack chairs sitting in front of it and um, I just think that would be gorgeous so I would love to see that um, and I think when I decide to do this this part because this is going to be uh, we have all our gas lines and everything running through here. I'm going to have to have the city come out and, uh, you know, mark everything. But, you know, it's not like we're going to dig that deep. But that is what um, I would like to see here. Uh, but you can see the grass is just doing fabulous. Um, Ernie, um, like I said, had it. He still has to put a uh, winter winter fertilizer on this lawn we didn't have them do anything to the front because the front was doing okay it was the back that was atrocious <laughs> and then my plan for the side yard this side anyways this coming spring is to turn this whole thing into a hosta garden now one of the things that i'm challenged with with this is all clay and hard and it's going to be interesting <laughs> um i might i might need to hire help to get this all loosened up and dug up but i'm going to show you some spots so we have this spot here and this is just from the hose sitting here and it not getting any um you know just from dying out but this you can't tell now because it's greening up I've been concentrating on the sprinkler over here but this was a perfect square and I told Ernie that is the strangest thing well let me tell you we think that the Sun was reflecting either off of this window during the summer onto here 
because it's offset. <clears throat> so here's the window, and if you look down, you see it starts right here, which is the center of the window. So we think it was reflecting, reflecting down like this, and it just burned this perfect square. It was perfect. It was a perfect square. It was weird. Um, so that's what we think happened. So that would be a challenge. And we had a little bit over here too with, I believe, this window. So that would be a challenge because my, my what I would love is because we're having an, I'm going to put an arbor here as well as an entrance into the garden. I would love to have a beautiful hosta garden going all the way along the house. So this is a challenge though, because if that's gonna happen during the summer to the grass, anything I plant here is gonna get um, the same, you know, same thing happening. So there's that. Now let's go over to the other side and I can explain to you. Oh, and really quickly, to start my hosta garden off, Ernie has mentioned he would like to add a step here, possibly. Um, I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna start the garden off here. I don't think we need a step um, off of the porch here. I prefer not, actually. Um, it's not like we can, well, it is easier to access the hose, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see about that. But the hostas we're gonna start with are gonna be these here, all of these. I will transplant all of these. I also have one in my bird bath planter. So I've got what, one, two, three, four, five, six to start. So that's fabulous. Um, but that's gonna be a project for spring. That's what I'm excited for. I'm so excited for that. Now, over here on this side, we do plan eventually, not sure when it's gonna happen, having a sidewalk of some sort installed. I don't know where it's gonna start, here or back here, not sure. But we want it to curve and kind of go around this planter here. <clears throat> and it's going to have to be close to the house. So it's going to have to go, you know, right up against the house here. Um, because this is a natural drain, drainage situation. But on this side of, you know, like let's say the sidewalk comes out to about here, on this side I can have some sort of a hedge, which I can take all the way down um, here because I really want to obscure that stuff there. So that is my plan for the garden. Now I didn't get any permission to do anything with the common area in front of, you know, we can see we all have grass. Nobody has done anything, but you know, I can, I can kick it off. <laughs> um, I want to do something of interest here and something of interest here, but I'm gonna wait because whatever I do here, well, like, let's say if I do a garden like a half moon this way, I'll carry it like that. So it'll be like an extension, you know, over. So that is my plan. Okay, guys. So that is it. That is what the garden is looking like. I really want um, your guys' opinion on that second channel. For me, I think it makes more sense because I can keep the gardening separate, the exterior separate from the interior. Um, it just makes more sense to me. I hope that, that you guys understand that. Um, it just is, uh, I think a lot of viewers that come to my channel to watch the gardening don't care for the interior and vice versa and then there's a lot of you who love it all um, from beginning to end so it wouldn't be too difficult for you to support my other channel if you enjoy the gardening aspect on this channel um, but it would be nice to see everything separate I think so I'd really like your guys' opinion on that so make sure to comment down below if you enjoyed today's video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below I love chatting with you guys in the comments I appreciate you guys so much and we will see you in the next video bye